Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Crypto Oracles. In today's video, I'm going to explain exactly why we're seeing a dip in the cryptocurrency markets, why Bitcoin has crashed all the way down to $40,000, the latest news, the latest events, and what we can uh, expect it to happen from here. So don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, and follow us on our, our social platforms. We are going to do a huge announcement coming up in the next couple of days revolving around our NFT project and the opening of our private Discord. All right, so let's dive right into it. So first things first, let's just take a look at what the markets look at today. No big surprise here. I think everybody watching this video will already know what's going on. So we're very, very much in the red uh, with pretty much every coin um, down 10 to 15%. Uh, we've seen this in crypto. We see this in crypto every year. We've seen slips in between 25 to 15% were the big dips in 2021. And we're seeing uh, 25 to 35% uh, back in 2017. So if you've been in crypto for a long time, this is nothing terrifying, but it is indeed something that needs explanation and that we need to dive into. So um, quick stop at the fear and greed index. Of course, we're into extreme fear. This is usually a good buying opportunity. I'm not saying you should go and buy now, always do your own research, but this is indeed very good if you did want to buy some projects and you didn't get a chance to do it before. So why are we seeing this dip? Well, the first piece of news related to this is what Charlie Munger said yesterday. He said he wished cryptocurrencies had never been invented and he admires China for banning them. Now you can imagine as one of the biggest um, investors in the US, somebody saying such a statement clearly has a big impact. So um, Warren Buffett is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway um, and Charlie Munger is the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. So they're two huge investors in the traditional market space and clearly words like this coming from them will have an effect. Um, I wish it had never been invented and I admire the Chinese. I think they made the correct decision, which was to simply ban them. Now, personal opinion here, I think Manjur is either incredibly out of touch or he doesn't understand the space at all. Um, I do agree slightly on some of his comments uh, from previously this year. He said, of course, I had Bitcoin success. I don't welcome a currency that's so helpful to kidnappers and extortionists and so forth, nor I do like shuffling out of extra billions of billions of dollars to somebody who just invented a new financial product out of thin air. Now, I agree somewhat slightly on the first part in the sense that Bitcoin was used in the past for illicit activities on the blockchain. We all know this, and this has been one of the major problems that we've been trying to address lately. Um, but everything else to me does not resonate at all. I really think that uh, you know people like him at this point in time actually starting to get scared about what's happening in the space. I mean, if you you know if you go back in the 80s and 70s, this is not so much different from what was happening with the gold market and with the you know traditional stock market at the very beginning. Um, and this is just very similar. There is so much technology and there is so much advancement behind what has been done here that it's hard for everybody to catch up. It's hard for everybody to understand it. And I don't expect somebody like him to actually fully understand what's going on. You know, we've been talking about metaverse. We're talking about a huge change and shift in narrative and reality. We're talking about living in a virtual world. And I don't expect somebody like him to actually understand that you can create and sell assets that don't exist, that are out of thin air. Yes, that's true. They're out of thin air, but they have value to people. Um, so, you know, comments like this will definitely have an impact. And this is definitely reason number one for what we're seeing today. So reason number two is the SEC rejected wisdom tree applications for the spot Bitcoin ETF. So the SEC, um, which is the Securist, United States Security and Exchange Commission, has officially disapproved asset manager wisdom tree spot BTC exchange traded fund after deferring uh, uh, on a decision several times this year. So this would have been the first um, spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States. Um, and this would have definitely propelled the exposure to, uh, of, from Bitcoin uh, into the traditional markets. And this is a step back, but we've seen ETFs launching in Canada just this week. And we've seen ETF launching all year long related to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this is definitely news that had an impact and can correlate to the dip we're seeing today. But that's not, that's, uh, you know, let's not take it too bad. We've seen uh, plenty of ETFs launching across the year. Um, so let's jump into some technical analysis. Uh, this is a chart that I actually had in one of my previous videos. I did not touch these lines uh, for this video, and I'm pretty happy to see that they were fairly accurate. 
you can see here we broke the first support level. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, so the first support level was at $63,000. We brought that one and we consolidated down at about 60,000. And then from that, we broke all the way down to 55. Now, $55,000 was our critical support. And this is the third reason why today we're seeing a dip. We broke below this support area. This was a very strong support area. And oh, look at that. We just hit the previous support area I traced as just about $40,000. So we're just shy of that area. And then we bounce back to 47 where we have another support. So if I actually trace here, you can see there was some consolidation in that zone and that's exactly where we're at today. Um, this is not a strong support area. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this actually going back all the way down to the 44 and 43 uh, zone. Um, and this kind of fits well with the narrative and what I portrayed before. Uh, I did expect this to either break resistance at 60,000, which we tried twice and then go up from there, or as I traced this very uh, crude line, expected to break downwards. And this is exactly what we did. We broke downwards here and we went all the way down where I traced this green line to um, the other support area. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Very similar narrative here. We're trending in an uptrending channel. We broke, um, so if I extend this line, we broke the support area and we fell into the previous uh, long-term uh, uptrend uh, support line. And today we brought that one as well. And if I extend my um, support areas, you can see that we pretty much did the same thing we did on Bitcoin, which is nearly hitting um, the 30,000, sorry, $3,000 mark and then bouncing back to the $4,000 resistance. Um, so this is where we're at today, extremely discounted. If you look at the RSI, we are in very, very oversold territory. So it is a good time to maybe do a couple of swing trades and enter some coins that you've been trying to enter for a very long time and couldn't do because of the ongoing rally. And overall, I would like to leave you with a bit of a note about the crypto space as a whole. We've seen uh, the NFTs launching this year and becoming absolutely massive. We've seen the metaverse revolutionizing the way we perceive assets in the space. We've seen ETFs um, and exposure into traditional finance to Bitcoin and to the crypto markets. We've seen huge adoption and institutional investors jumping into the space. We've seen news and media talking about it like we've seen never before. So this space is not about to collapse and disappear. This is not how you should take dips like this. Uh, it is important to understand them, which is what I hope we just did. But uh, it's important not to desperate, you know, not to um, go crazy about it. Um, but keep an eye and see, you know, what you, how, you, how you can get the best out of it. And on this note, it was something I was looking at yesterday called Stoic. Um, this is not a NAD, and not um, um, and we're not in a partnership with them. But Stoic AI, it's a automated uh, trading platform that actually helps you trade. So if you're not an experienced trader, if you didn't have any stop losses today, for example, and you ended up losing all the way up to 15%, um, well, then I suggest you look in solutions like this instead of trying to trade yourself. Stoic ETF, for example, is a, um, well, they have their own strategy and they allow you to trade with them using their app. And they have a portfolio that is changed every day, rebalanced every day and tries to perform better. And if you look at the performer over time, it actually outperforms Bitcoin by quite a lot. And the average returns in the last year were just shy of 2000%. So this is, there is plenty of solution like this and I would definitely recommend at least taking a look at them. All right, this is it for today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, join our Telegram, join our Discord, leave comments down below and feel free to ask anything you need to know. Thank you very much and I will see you tomorrow.